and welcome. Kim here from JustAskKim.com and YouCanDoItTraining.com. And today I'd like to take you on a walkthrough of how to configure a domain-based email, a very professional looking email that's associated with the domain that you're likely using for your blog, or your website, or your e-commerce site, and how to take that email address and rather than having to check it in webmail, how to pull it into your Gmail account, how to be able to check it from your Gmail account, and how when you send replies from your Gmail account, you can choose for those replies to show your domain-based email rather than revealing that Gmail account. The Gmail account is a really flexible way to have access to your web-based email, all sorts of places. There's lots of apps and tools and lots of ways to really expand the power of Gmail. For example, you may have taken my Pump Up Gmail course that really helps you turn Gmail into a very robust system. And by doing this with your domain-based email account, you're able to take the power of Gmail and connect it to your domain-based email so that you have very professional branding and so that it doesn't look like you're running around with a free mail account and you're somebody that's pretending to be a business who doesn't know what they're doing. So this is going to give you a lot of professionalism. So what we're going to start by doing is by coming into our cPanel. And you'll see here I've pulled up a domain and you're going to go to the primary domain on your hosting. Now it may work for secondary domains on some web, on some web hosts, it doesn't on all. So you may need to look at your hosting account details for how to get into your cPanel. For most people though, it's your primary domain.com slash cPanel. Now if you're a .NET, of course use the .NET or whatever your respective sub, sub is. So click on that and what it's going to do is it's going to redirect you to a slightly longer URL and you're going to log in. And you're going to do that with the credentials from your hosting and when you get here you're going to be in cPanel. And cPanel is a fantastic resource. There's tons of tools in here. There's so much you can do. This gives you a lot of power and control over your business, but it can be a little overwhelming. If you haven't already, you may, have, you may want to check out my cPanel course. It'll help you come to better understand cPanel and better understand how to make use of a lot of the tools in here and really develop a lot of power for your business. But today what we're going to do is we're going to start out by making an email address. You may have already made one, so just hang tight and follow along and we'll get to the point where you'll catch up too. So we're going to set up, we're just going to set up sample and we're going to give it a password and I'm going to use a little password generator here. Make sure you write this down. Okay, so we got that. We got that. We're strong. I'm going to set this to unlimited because this hosting account for these emails, this is okay for this. We're going to use POP3, so this isn't going to all sit on the server and create tons of load. It's not a big deal for this account. You may have a hosting account with limited mail storage, though, so be sure you're aware of your hosting situation. Now, I'm going to pull up a little notepad file, and I'm going to pop that password in there, and I'm going to write sample at Okay, so I've got that jotted down. So I'm going to put that out of the way and I'm going to click create account. Whoops, that reverted back to 250. That's okay. You could be either. Either is fine here. Either will work, but having it unlimited will avoid you ever being over quota. And if you have the storage space to allow that, if you've got plenty of disk storage space, being that way will help ensure that you stay on mailing lists. If you ever hit your quota and you're on mailing lists, the emails to you are going to bounce and you're going to be removed from those email lists. So just something important to know. Plus your customers are going to get bounced emails to you and that's never good. So we're here. We are now in the email section. We are in, it says we're in email accounts and we just created our email account. And what we want here is this more. And under more, we have two options. We can access webmail or we can configure the email clients. Now, accessing webmail is a great way to check your email on the server. If you're ever having real trouble with something, if Gmail's giving you fits, if you know Mac mail is giving you fits, if maybe you don't have them installed on a system you're on and you know you can't get to them because it would mess with somebody else's Gmail settings and you just really need to get to your email, log into your cPanel, come to webmail, and you can check all your emails right here from cPanel in webmail. But for now, we're going to go to Configure Email Client. And here, there's a lot of different options, and you'll see some auto setup for some things, for Mac OS Mail App, and for Thunderbird, and KDE, and Microsoft Outlook. But what we want to do is we want to come down here to Manual Settings. And this can look a little intimidating, but it's just because there's some choices here. 
you have the secure SSL TLS settings and the non-secure ones. We always want to try to get the SSL ones working first. Those are the ones that have better security. It makes sure that the server isn't revealing your password as it goes through the wide open web. This is just a better way to go. And you have a couple options here. You have POP and IMAP. Now, Gmail tends to refuse the IMAP settings. Gmail doesn't tend to have your IMAP support, but some of your mail clients do. If you were setting up something like Mac Mail or setting up Thunderbird and that, you'd have IMAP available. But generally, you're looking for these POP3 settings. This is going to be the safer one for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly copy this up, and I'm going to put this in my notepad file. I'm going to scroll down, put that in there. Now, in some situations, you will have to revert to this non-SSL setting. Sometimes you'll find that there's something misconfigured in your hosting or you're using a mail client that, you know, doesn't support SSL, which would be terrible. That's a terrible idea, you know, and this is here as a fallback, but don't use this as your routine method of connecting. So we've copied this into our notepad and now we want to go over to Gmail. So I'm just going to come over here. I'm going to pop over in another browser. And you can use the same browser, of course. I just did this to make it quick so I could be have it all together for you. And here, you're in Gmail, and you're going to come to the gear icon. And in the gear icon, you're going to drop down, and you're going to go to settings. And in settings, you're going to have a row of tabs across the top. It's kind of hard to tell if these are actually tabs, but they are. You'll see as the ones get a little grayer than the other. And here, you're going to come to accounts and import. And here, you're going to come down, and you may see C send email or send mail as and you'll also see check mail from another account using pop3 and what we want to do is we want to start by adding the pop3 setup to import the email and then we'll worry about getting it to send and so what we're going to do is we're going to start here by clicking this pop3 mail account you own and this brings up this little sub box now let's make, pull it up in the corner here and so here we're going to start with the email address we want to set up today. And so we've already set it up, so we're going to put this in the box. And we're going to go to Next. So once you click Next, you'll come to this page, and this is to finish adding your credentials. The problem here is that Gmail almost always takes the first part of the email address to use as your username. And you'll see that if you look at this document, that your whole email address is your username. So be sure you come back and get your whole username and your whole password and that you get this POP3 setting right because this POP3 server, because usually it's not what is autofilled here. So it says incoming server, and you'll see in this case, incoming and outgoing are the same, and that generally is the case. So we'll set this, and we'll put this there. And remember, we're setting up POP3, so we're going to click this, the POP3 come down, we're going to get 995. In this case, be sure you check your own server to make sure your numbers are the same. Now, leave a copy of the retrieve message on the server. Generally, that's no. Generally, we want it to pull it into Gmail and there not to be a second copy there. You could leave a copy there if you wanted it that way, but then you have to remember that you can run out of hosting space if you get a ton of email built up there and you put yourself into hosting jeopardy by having too much stuff up on the server. So it's totally up to you how you want to do this, but most of the time I like to just pull it locally and not have that extra copy stored on the server. Okay, always use a secure SSL connection when retrieving email. Yes, yes, please use that SSL. And we talked about that. That's why we're using the secure one here. And that's why we had to use the POP server that looks a little different than other things. Are we going to label it? I like to label it. I like to have a label in Gmail that lets me know that it came in on that email address just so I can really quickly visually tell and so that I make sure when I send it out that I do the right things right. Okay, are we going to archive the incoming messages and skip the inbox? Generally, that's no. Generally, you want them to be in your inbox, just like fresh email, and to do the right thing. But sometimes you're using these email addresses to import, I don't know, maybe a newsletter or a data feed or something that you really don't need to look at. It's just an archive kind of thing, and you might want to auto-archive them. That's fine. You can leave that there. Click Add Account. And you're going to see, well, Gmail prompting. Okay, make last pass get out of here. And now it's going to tell you that the account's been added. And it says, would you like to also go ahead and send as this address? And you're going to click yes, because obviously if we're retrieving the email, we want to be able to send as the email address. Now, something worth noticing is that you can only set up 
five incoming pop email accounts into Gmail. There is a limit. If you have five already set up, you'll have gotten to that step right that we just did and right before there, and it would have failed out. It would have said, you're at the max. That's all you can do. There is no way around that. There is no other option. Your options then become to go back to your cPanel and use email forwarding and send email from one account over to another account and then send that account into Gmail. So you pipe a whole bunch into one and then send it. But then you can't tell which email account it originally come in on. So you have that becomes a real pain in the rump once you get to that point. But here we go. It says, you know, we wanted to send as this account. So we're going to say, what name are we going to put on it? So put your name in here, however you want to send. Are we going to treat this as an alias? Generally, yes. Um, there's an explanation of that here. And then click Next. And this is going to come up. And it's going to say, do you want to send through SMTP from Gmail or through your local servers? There's some differences here. I like generally to send through Gmail, but you can send through your local servers. And if you are using SPF and MX records and advanced setup to improve your deliverability and to sign your domain name, on various things to say that email can only be sent from that server. And you have to be real careful about mailing it off the Gmail server because it could go straight to spam. Most people, though, don't have those set up. Now, I do on other accounts. I don't on this account. I do on other accounts have that set up. So I have to mail either off the SMTP server or I have to update my SPF records to allow Gmail to send. But generally, you're going to click this first box. If you don't know, contact your webmaster. Contact the individual who did your original setup and who you pay to maintain your SPF records and things like that to improve your deliverability. Get on a consult with them and ask them which one you should use. Pretty simple. Now, next step is to verify that you own the email address when you click Send Verification. And then it's going to prompt us for a code. It says, or we can click the link in there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this aside. And I'm going to come to the inbox in Gmail. And I'm going to refresh. And we may not have it just yet. Oops, there it is. There it is in updates. And you hear my kitty in the background. And here we have our link. And we have our code. Now you can either put the code in the box or you can click the link. It doesn't matter which you do. I'm just going to put the code in here just for just for the sake of letting you go through the box. And the box just vanishes. There's no confirmation. That's all. We're going to delete this. And then you're going to get one more email that's going to say that this has been set up correctly. Give it just a second to get here from the server. Oops. OK, so I still don't have that email. But if I go to settings, I should show this to you anyways. Go to settings. And in here, come back to accounts and import. And now in send mail as, you will see that here is this domain-based email address. And you can set whether your Gmail address is default or whether it's default. That's totally up to you. And how to handle when replying, which one to use as the automatic, as you know, when replying to a message from there. Now, I like to set it that it replies to the same email address that it was received from. And so I generally leave this. And then under check your pop three, you're going to have this listed. It's going to say it was checked, one was fetched, and there's going to be no error message here. This tells you you're correctly set up. Sometimes you'll have hosting hiccups, and Gmail will start to have trouble retrieving stuff from the server. And if so, you're going to have little messages here that are going to tell you what's up. So if you get those, either your settings have changed, meaning you changed web hosts or you changed something, generally changed web hosts and you've lost connection, or something is up with your hosting account, and you need to look into that, get in touch with your webmaster on that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to my inbox, and I'm going to click Compile. Okay, so now that we've set all the settings and made sure they're right, let's take an example through sending an email, have a look at what it looks like, and see how it goes. So I'm going to click Compose, and it's going to pull up the editor, and I'm going to send it to myself. So I'm going to send it to Sample. And I'm going to, here under the From, there's now a drop down. And in the drop down, you will see that you have both your Gmail address and your domain base address. This is excellent. Put that in there. I'm going to go test one. I'm going to go test one. And we're going to send it to ourselves. So what we're going to do here is we're going to click Send. And then we're going to refresh this. 
And now we see that the email has been received. And now we can see that it comes up with the sample here with the domain-based email address. And it also, we see that we sent it from the domain-based address. So we can see that both of these were working. So now what we want to see is what happens when we click reply. And under reply, we're going to do, here, click it to get it to further show up. And you're going to see that now, again, we have both options. And so you can click to send or this reply as the domain-based email address. And so all I did was click right next to the two. Let me click on that one more time and let you see that. We're in this email. We're going to click reply. And here we only see the email it's going to. But if I click in here, it opens this expanded editor. And now I can drop this down and use the domain base. And this is because of how we set our settings up. We can go change this so that it defaults to that other one. But we really should pay attention because sometimes web apps can be flaky. Sometimes things happen. Just look at which one it's sending from before you send it back out. All good. Type your message. We'll do test two. It's just our reply. Click send. And we just replied to ourselves essentially. Come back here to the inbox. We can see test one thread became test two. And that's all there is to it. That is all that is required to set this up. We can come back into settings real quick. And you can come back to accounts import. And again here, when replying to a message, reply from the same address it was sent from or always reply from the Gmail one. And if you wanted to always reply from the same, click that checkbox. We kind of missed that earlier. And the, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. Pretty simple and straightforward, but there is a lot of steps. So be sure you go through this video, have a walkthrough, slow it down, go through the steps one at a time, make sure you're using your secure settings, make sure that you've got it all together in a little notepad file, and then you can close this file out and get rid of this as long as you have that password wrote down somewhere else or that password in LastPass. Be sure you hold on to that because you need that password to get stuff from the server. So that is really all there is to it. It's as simple as that. That's all it takes to get Gmail sending to and receiving from your domain-based email accounts. This adds a lot of professionalism for you. This creates a lot of branding power. It gets rid of that ugly Gmail address if you don't really want to be using it but still want all the power. And then you can do things like are in the pump up Gmail guide in order to expand on the capacity of Gmail and to make Gmail a more robust solution. Now this video and others like it is part of my WordPress video library training. And if you're getting started with WordPress or you're wanting to expand on your ability, if you're tired of having to try to dig up guides and scramble and not knowing where to go and wanting something all in one place that's going to be real straightforward just like this guide is, be sure to give it a click. I'll put a link in the description below. And if you need anything at all, look forward to hearing from you. My name is Kimberly Castleberry from JustAskKim.com. You take care and have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.